right after COVID hit, we're all at home and we just locked down. You can't go anywhere. I watched the Beatles sing Get Back on the roof of the, of the Apple Studios in London. You saw all the people come out of their homes and looking up at this huge tall building. You still couldn't see the band, but you could hear the music. And all these people were out on the street looking up. See, no, it was the Beatles been like, I'm going to do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Neil, thank you so much for coming on Soul Seeker Podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here. You have been should make sure you make, wait till the end of the cl- end of the show before you, there's any compliments thrown. Oh, okay. Like awesome. I mean, if it turns out to be shitty, then it's not going to be that awesome. That's true too. So right? let's see if, <laughs> see how we do together. Let's see how we do together. Let's that, see if we gel. Let's see if we gel. <laughs> well, let's start here because you're from London and you've been in Santa Cruz, I believe, what thirty years. I'm from Brighton, which is right below London on the south coast, and I've been here since 1980. You know, I checked my passport, but I think it's 82, right around there. Yeah. 83, right around there. I came here. Yeah, and luckily that's pretty easy math, about 40 years. Yeah. 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 That's a long way, time. Way before you were even, way before you even thought of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> negative six, about negative six or so. Your parents didn't even think about you, right? Then Now we're going to go have some fun first. This is true. This is true. Wait, before we make a Sam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, what really drew you to Santa Cruz? Because that is a far move. I think, and I thought about this because I don't know what really, my parents brought me to California when I was 16 on vacation. We were kind of, went, kind of went from LA and I think we ended up in San Francisco, kind of slowly meandering up the coast. And, and then I'm um, like, I just fell in love with the whole thing, you know, just like, beaches, palm trees, and the ocean. It was, I think it was, we came here in, in February, which was still like a day like today. It was 70 degrees. Yeah. It was February. I'm like, you know, all these things kept adding up. Like, why did that, you know, you know, like, I need to be here, not, I need to stay in England. Totally. And, and you know, it was like, the, it was beautiful girls on the beach. And like, it's just, it was one thing after another. McDonald's. McDonald's? Well, I never had, a, I never, we never had fast food. Right. Right. For we, sure. We didn't have McDonald's in England. Like, where you can go get, you know, burger and fries on three dollars. It was like, and you know, all, all these things kind of added up to me, to me coming to California. And then uh, I think, but I think, I think somebody up above or what, or below, whatever, moves people here. Like, there's so many people that you probably talk to, and I probably talk to you. And that's the first thing you go, know, how you how you end up here? You know, people from. There's people living in Santa Cruz from all over the United States or the other countries that kind of like chess pieces. Like, yeah. okay, you're you're supposed to, you know, like someone up above is going like that, like a, like a chessboard, and we all end up in Santa Cruz. Yeah, I mean, true. I think if you, I don't know how many people you interview, but I think I would imagine I, I haven't even thought about it, but it'd be kind of cool to find out is that of like all the shows I've done or people you talk to, how many people are actually born here? Oh, in Santa Cruz. Yeah. You know, I haven't interviewed at like a large percentage that live in Santa Cruz, but oh, I've but, done about 500 podcasts yeah, at this or, point. Or yeah. people that you know. Yeah, yeah, people you know. Yeah, right, you know, how, sure. how many people actually were born? In, I mean, I actually... Even I mean, Bay Area. Well, yeah, yeah you no, know, but here. Yeah, totally. You know, here is different. I think, yeah. you know, like, how many people are actually born and raised here? So, you know, my son was born here. It's cool. He was born in Santa Cruz, California. Pretty cool. It's really uh, cool. Right? But how many people are, are, are my age actually born and raised, you know, uh, born and raised in Santa Cruz? I think it's not that many. Mm-mm. Yeah. But I think, so I think, I think there's, I think it's something other, something other spirit or whatever is kind of like takes, you know, you, we are meant to be here. So there's, have you seen the Pixar movie Soul? No. Have you heard of it? No. It's an incredible movie. It really? came out uh, Christmas Day, 2020. And the whole premise of the movie is this guy, his name's Joe Gardner, the character ch- played by Jamie Foxx. It's animation, obviously, Pixar. But he's a struggling band teacher in a school. And then he gets his big break, you know, to be a jazz musician with, like, the the big musician in the movie, a made-up character. Yeah. He gets so excited about it. And without any spoilers, 
it it's the, one of the most deep movies about spirituality that I've ever seen. And I highly recommend it to anyone interested yeah. in spirituality. But what the reason why I bring that up is this co- concept of soul contracts. Have you heard of soul contracts? Uh-uh. So the movie doesn't straight up call it soul contracts, but they take this philosophy that's made been popularized by many spiritual teachers, including Carolyn Mace. And the soul contract is basically before going into this realm of time and place on earth, yeah. we're, we're already deciding with other souls, like, hey, I'm going to play this role and you're going to play that role and whatnot. So when you talk about like something higher at play to bring right. people right. here, like that's kind of the belief of soul contracts. Right, right. Yeah. I totally believe, I totally believe that. I, just, uh, just the people were like moved here like chess pieces and we... St- you know, and it's like it's like the people said. You know, you can check out, but you can't leave here. Mm, right, right. Check out, but you can never leave. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you go somewhere else. You know, oh, I'm gonna go to Fiji. I'm gonna go to I'm Hawaii and I uh, New Zealand, wherever. But you kind of you kind of can't wait to get back. Almost. Totally. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Vortex. Huh? It's a vortex. <laughs> Absolutely. Back. Yeah, it's a vortex for sure. Good seeing you. Cool. Had a buddy stop by. Shout out to Scott. <laughs> but yeah, that's just uh, this neighborhood and this this area, right? Pleasure Point, Santa Cruz. So let's just fast forward. You've been here for about 40 years. And right. At this point, I believe your podcast won a swelly, right? For the... No. Oh, okay. Uh-uh. But mean... Whatever. It, yeah. yeah. The point is, you're very well known and respected in this town for your broadcasting. It started in radio, right? I'm terrible at it. <laughs> it's, it's funny because i you know peter mel said you know you're so bad that it's good that's funny it's you know, you, and i'm like yeah pro- it's probably very true you know right. yeah it's just terrible my co-host terry campion owns the border is right. electrifying is he's incredible yeah. way better than me but uh, we put do it together and uh, i don't know i should somebody should have done it but be- somebody should have done it before i don't know uh, why somebody know we did it before but you started a few years ago, right? Nah, it was like nine years ago now. No, oh, not okay. That's eight or nine, was a eight, or, eight or nine years ago, about KSCO, the radio station. Okay, so for everyone tuning in, listening, that's outside of the area, the local radio station, in our town, Santa Cruz. You started there, yeah, and it was like a skate surf like lifestyle show, right? Well, I, well, I used to write this. I used to write the surf column for the paper, which is another funny thing how that even happened. I was I was coaching a high school surf team, Harbor High. And then these kids were surfing their ass off in this big contest, big, big contest. And I look in the paper the next day to see something, and it was like girls' JV tennis. Nothing against take girls' JV tennis, but like, where's the surfing? Where's right. the kids, right? So I called them. I called the Sentinel up. I go, hey, you guys should write a surf column. Come on. It's the Santa Cruz. Sentinel. This is Santa Cruz is the heart of Santa Cruz is surfing. We don't, uh, but a good idea, but we don't have anybody to write it. So anyway, they, they contact a few people, but they end up coming back to me, and I, we have, with no experience, started writing surf columns hmm. for the Sentinel. And then that lasted like five years. I probably wrote a couple hundred articles for the Sentinel. And then one day they called me and said, hey, Neil, Bats got some bad news, which I knew was coming. We don't have any money to pay you. No money. This print, you know, print media was like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I was driving by KSCO at the very moment I got that phone call. And as soon as I hung up, I turned left <laughs> into KSCO. There you go. And I walked in there, and I know the person that runs the programming. I go, Rosie, she does the morning show at KSCO. Rosie, you should do a, you should do a, sh- a show on surfing and skateboarding. Because in this town, if you're born with a surfboard on the one arm and a skateboard under the other. She's like, uh, we don't do sports here. I go, well, then, you know, I said, you're in the middle of the pleasure point. Should do something. But they decided they didn't want it. She turned me down immediately. And I kept bugging her. And finally, they gave me a. And they gave me a trial period. Mm. We're going to try it. Right. It's pretty funny how we did it. It's just the whole thing. Was, I don't know how much more you want to go into that, but it's pretty Tell funny. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. So I go, so we, um, I go, if, you have a, if I have a surf and skate show, it's going to bring youth into this radio station. Because right now, the only people listening to KSEO is people who are 80 years old and above, and soon they're all going to be dead. And you've got no audience. So you need to inf- we need to get an infusion of youth to listen to your station. So she goes, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you're right. You're, uh, so I'm like, yeah. So I started. 
And she goes, well, you need to get like four or five co-hosts. I think I told you this. Mm-hmm. You're going to get four or five co Four or five? What do you make four or five for? You guys are a bunch of skaters and surfers. You're not going to show up. And you're going to leave us <laughs> in the cold out. You're going to leave us called out as, yeah. as a surf. You know? Like, I'm like, what am I, 12? Yeah. Right. 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 And also, for listeners at the time, you're in real estate, right? Like, I, I, ju- I quit. I quit doing, I was in the commercial real estate uh, business and I absolutely loathed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, you know, I made, it, was, it was good, but monetary wise, but I actually was, you know, my the my the, the quality of my life during that period sucked totally. So what about what about the money? It wasn't about what I had or didn't have, whatever. The quality of my life sucked because I was stressed. You know, if I went surfing, I'd come out of the water and go. There'd be you know, e texts and messages like, "Oh my god, shit's blowing up." I got to go deal with it. it. Just was it was hard and up all night long thinking about stuff and like. And a lot of people are experiencing that in their professions, their careers, or their relationships. What advice do you have for people that may currently be feeling massive amounts of stress and wanting to make a change? I think it was, it was my sister, my stepsister that lives in New Zealand. My, excuse me, my half-sister lives in New Zealand. And I went down there with this, you know, back when cell phones were, were starting out, I went down there with a satellite phone. It's like the size of, the size of my car. Right, I think they had those in like Back. the original Jurassic Pro. Yeah, they were something. like they were like. So I had to get one because I had to deal with all this stuff. As even though I was, you know, twelve thousand miles away in New Zealand, I had to, I was I was on vacation, but I was working. Then my sister, half sister, she grabbed me by the ear, and she pulled me into a room, and she goes, "I need to ask you a question." I go, "I go what?" She goes, "I need to ask you what the quality of your life is." I'm like, "Well, it's I go, it's great. I got I got this and I got that and I got this." This, I got that. I'm going to get this. I'm looking to buy one of those, right? Blah, 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 right? And she goes, no, 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 no. She goes, I want to know what the quality of your life is. I'm like, she goes, go think about it for 24 hours and we'll have this conversation tomorrow. I'm going, all right. You know, my sister's tough. And I, you know, but, but I knew way, I had a way of running over her, but she's not, but she's tough. So next day, go talk to her again. And I thought about it. And I go, you know what, Angela, you're right. My quality of my life is shit. I'm not spending enough time with my kid. I'm not doing things I enjoy. I'm not doing anything I enjoy. And uh, I'm not being a father. I'm not being a good enough father because I wasn't around all the time. So I, when I so I when I went back, I just quit my job and decided I want to go do something that I want to go do. And was that when you got into being a columnist or at the radio show? Or oh, that was that all. That was. Bef- I just started getting back. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to do something for myself. I had my own schedule. No one told me what yeah. to do. No, I, I, can, I wanted to create my own quality. So we started Stand Up Palpable, which I, I was Stand Up Palpable because it first came out when I went, I went with Bob Pearson, and he, he taught me, showed me how to do it. And he, he taught me about this new, new board that he was making with the paddle and how Laird was writing it, and blah, 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 blah. And for me, surfing was Nirvana, right? There was nothing better than walking down from, when I lived on 36, same location you are in, right? Walk, nothing, nothing, yeah, nothing better it, yeah. than going down and paddling and paddling out and catching some waves right here at the point. Nirvana. Yeah. So for some reason or other, Bob got me on this fucking paddle board, right? And I, I kept, I, he didn't tell me how to do it. I just fell in a thousand times. People yelling at me, get that thing out of here. Screaming. People that I had surfed with for 20 years, my spot, screaming at me, get that thing out of here. And then I, eventually I figured out how to do it. And then eventually I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? This could, I could get the permits for all the lakes over in the, the way the money was is in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And people can't paddle, still teach paddleboarding out here in the ocean. It's not. It's hard, yeah. and it's cold, and people are afraid of kelp, and people are afraid of sharks, and blah 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 blah. So I decided I was going to take the whole thing from here and do something in the Bay Area. So I got all the permits for all the lakes. I just put all these boards out there, and I rented them all. Yeah. It was, you know, it was fun, but for for it was fun until you, then you realize you have to deal with the public, which became unfun after you know four or five months of driving over the hill and like you know. 
dealing with people's goes and dealing with people's shit and people not saying please or thank you, which pissed me off, you know. Yeah. So, and then I second job with the Sentinel writing for the paper until that, you know, that came to an end. Mm -hmm. Then the start of the radio show. And then you started the radio show. Yeah. Because we wanted to, we decided that I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to record all the surf and skate history in Santa Cruz and beyond, mainly here. Mm -hmm. So what are some facts that you can uh, just fire away about the surf history of Santa Cruz? On film, if I want to do that. Well, just anything that comes uh, to mind. I think, I think, let me think about that for a second. Okay, cool. We can come back to it. Yeah, I'm going to think about that. How has surf culture changed in Santa Cruz in the past 40 years? I think it's gotten, you know, it's changed. But you see the number of people out here. Right. I, you know, I'm one of the, I'm one of those that have bitched and moaned and complained. God damn, people everywhere. God damn. My brakes now are overcrowded. But you know what? I, I, the person next to me has every right to be in the ocean as I do. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's that mass has found out how an incredible sport it is. Before, the masses didn't know what an incredible, incredible sport it is. And, that's... And, one of those, and lifestyle. But now they've all found out. You know, I mean, look at Costco. They, they figured it out, too. They go, you know, right? Number one board shaping company, board, board producing company is Costco. I did not know that. That's wild. There, theirs is what surf tech or something, or not surf tech? No, uh, storm tech, St wave storm, wave they storm. Go. That's what it is. But they, now they got the one with Jerry Lopez's signature. Who gave himself up for you know his signature on there. But you know Jerry Lopez. I, but if you if you go up to ninety nine percent of the people who ride those boards, ask them who Jerry Lopez. You know who Jerry Lopez is? No. Well, yeah, he, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Wave storm. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just don't own one, so of course I wouldn't know that. But the surf culture. Just, I mean, it's, it's a. It's a it's a life. I mean, the people who are involved in surfing, it's a lifestyle. The people I've talked to is the people I've talked to is just all the stories. It just amazes me. Right. I've been lucky. The, when I wrote for the paper, it gave me the it opened it opened the door to go to talk to someone. Because if I go, if I go, let's say so I true. call up Doug Howe. Hey, Doug, this is Neil. You don't know me. Well, I'm going to come talk to you for an hour. Do you mind? He's gonna, Get the fuck out of here, dude. No, no, I'm not talking to you. But it was Neil from the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. I'm a reporter. I want to come and do a story on you. Oh, and 99% of the people said yes. I yeah. want to talk about myself. Yeah, to your point earlier about like why was no one doing this in town before me when you started the the radio show nine years ago from now 2022. Yeah, right? it's similar for me. I didn't get started in podcasting until January of 2017, but it was the same thing. I, I started a show called What Up Silicon Valley, and it was a way to open up doors that I would have never had before. I was right. interviewing Super Bowl champions inside KNBR studio at Levi Stadium, interviewing the president, Al Guido of the Niners, and famous comedians like Angela Johnson and just movers and shakers. And right. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, how has no one done this before? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You're still doing that? Not that show, because no. that kind of morphed into a media network, and we have five different shows on the media network, yeah. and we had an annual in-person event at eBay's headquarters called Pitch Tank. It was our version of Shark Tank. And then I drank a plant medicine known as ayahuasca in 2019 when I was going through a numbing depression, got into spirituality, and I said, fuck all that with Silicon Valley and moved here to Pleasure Point, right. and the rest is history. And right. now this show kind of encompasses all of the other podcasts I had previously because it's just about our journey and living and to your point, quality of life. Right. Because most of the time we don't, we're not able to have that pause to reflect and be like, am I actually happy in this moment? And am I happy of the trajectory of my life? Right. You know? Right. So it's really powerful, powerful going back to like soul contracts and things like that with your half sister for her to have that reflection to you, for you to sit with that. And then, look, you came back and just quit your job and the rest is history since then. Yeah. Most yeah. people aren't going to take action, you know? I had to because it's just as I was miserable. Right. You know, I just was not happy even though I was, just, I was miserable. So I just need to do something about it. And so I just, just pulled the trigger. That's enough. Yeah. Even though the income went and all this, you know, the money went and this, that, and that like, went. I didn't care. So going back to the story of when you started at the radio station, uh, she mentioned a joke about having five of you guys because you weren't reliable, but then 
What happened next to really get the show going, and how did that morph well, into off the, it's, off the lip? It morphed into into I, I, so she wanted us to rehearse, which we rehearsed for like five days. Yeah, I got TC Terry Campion who owns a boardroom. I knew was good. I I knew was good on a microphone because ha, I I had oh, this is a crazy deal. I had a dog show at the Yacht Harbor, okay. the world's first dog show in water. <laughs> And it was freaking awesome. It was packed. Must have been twenty five people down there with dogs on the surfboard, all dressed up. And oh, it was great. freaking. It was the 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 harbor host at the time said, "Neil, this is the best, the most fun we've ever had at the harbor uh, for an event." So, but TC was. I don't know why I got him down there. He was on the microphone. He was. Everyone was laughing their asses off. And he was really good. And I'm helping people. We had this. We had this dog show. So came to do the radio show. I go, TC, are you so good on the microphone? Would you come back? He goes, dude, can't. I got three stores, two kids. I'm married. No, I can't. Do- no. He goes, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be a fill-in guy. Good. So who do I need to get? Who can I get? Because I need to kind of a skate guy. Because I, I knew about I skateboard a little, but I didn't have the you know, knowledge, of, deep history of knowledge of skateboarding. So, I, and I knew Jimbo Phillips. I don't know why I knew Jimbo. Oh, Jimbo did the logo for my dog show thing. His, his kid did. And, I, and I, for listeners, Jimbo is the dude that created the Santa Cruz brand in the. Well, his dad, hands, his right? dad did. Oh, got it. Okay. Right. And what? Jimbo followed suit. Jimbo followed suit. What's Jimbo's dad's name? Jim Phillips. Got it. Okay. Right. So, Jim Phillips, senior, and there's Jimbo and Colby, also, who's now a. In his own right, a wonderful artist. I gave him his first. We gave him his. Me and my kid gave him his first job gig. He did the logo for the Dog Jam. It's oh, okay. called the Dog Jam. Yeah. Remember the Log Jam surf contest here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. instead of the Log Jam, it was the Dog Jam. Got it. Yeah. He, so anyway, so I knew Jimbo, and I kept. But Jimbo doesn't say two words. God bless him, Jimbo. Yeah, you'd say more than two words. But Jim was pretty quiet. And then so I went up to his house like two or three times, and finally just caved. Goes, Fuck, okay. I'll do it, yeah. right? So I go, dude, meet us down. It's great. I got TC back up. You got, I got the fame Jimbo Phillips, right. who's like, you know, unbelievably well-known skate artist. He's got you know, a quarter million followers on Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. This is working out great. Yeah. So we get down there. It's a station just to rehearse like this. And TC's here, and Jimbo's there, and TC and I like talking like you and I like this, right? Yeah. Microphones on. We're rapping, even though it wasn't being broadcasted. Let's just practice. Right. And Jimbo sit, sat there and said nothing. Come on, Jimbo, say something, dude. This is just a rehearsal. He's like, dude, I, I don't know. So anyway, end of the rehearsal, and he left immediately. And TC immediately got in my ear and goes, dude, I got to do this with you. And he goes, I got to do this. This is going to be freaking fun. This beautiful. Have you been to the studio there? I have not. It's all rounded walls for, for, for music and the cork floor. It's incredible. It's an incredible piece of history. So he goes, dude, I'll do this with you. And then Jimbo texted me. He must have been three feet out the door. He's like, dude, I, he goes, I, I, I'm out. I go, he goes, I'm out. I go, I'll tell you what, Jimbo, I'll let you out of your contract. Don't have. And you need to draw me a logo. Now, to get a logo from Jimbo is a six, six month to a year wait. Wow. Right? He's, right? How much does he charge? Nothing. Right? No, 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 not you, but... Uh, oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, he's not cheap. I know yeah. that. You know, it's, I'd be curious. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not cheap anyway. So he, 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 I go, you need to draw me a logo. So literally, he called me two hours later. He goes, Neil, come to my house. I'm into his house. And he made me this logo. Oh, sweet. I mean, so I got a logo. I got TC, my co-host. I've gone, this is freaking what? No, great. Yeah. So we got, we, so I go, who's the hell's our, I go, TC, who the hell is going to be our first guest? He goes, I don't know, pick somebody. Because if you think about it, right, from where we're sitting right here, in this spot, that we talked about before, I would have, I, I could get enough surf and skate history, skate guests for three years. Right. My show was Tuesday night. It wasn't three or four, sh- like a podcast, but four sh- night. Every Tuesday night was my show. I have enough guests for like, from a quarter mile radius from here for three years. I guess up the yin yang. So who's the, the first one? Like, dude, you got to pick Bob. Yeah. Pearson. So Pearson was our first one. And, the, and it, then we knew we were going to have a good time. 
because our second guest was Anthony Rufo. You know Rufo? I don't. Well, Anthony Rufo is a well-known surfer here in town, especially on the west on west side. Incredible surfer, still is to this day. He's in his fifties, but he ran into he ran into some problems and issues of drugs and ended up in jail. And right before our second show, he got he got out of jail. So we brought his, and his jail. It was Terry was TC's neighbor. Oh, so wow. we got we got Rufo and his jailer for our second show. That was pretty funny. What did you guys talk? About? I don't even remember. I got to go a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but I was the second. Yeah, this is going to be fun. We have some fun with this. And so, we recorded so many people, more than on they, pe- pe- and it's like the Johnny Carson show. It's like you know, or late night show. People come back because they can't get the whole story. Their all their whole story in an hour. Yeah, totally. So it's fun because you're going to have them back. Yeah. So okay, we talked about the '60s. So Doug, you're going to come back later, and we're going to talk about the '70s, and we'll come back later. We'll talk about the '80s. You know, so and they want to come back. You know. Yeah, and now a lot of people. There's been several people that are not around anymore. They just, you know, they're, they're not here. Right, passed on. That makes sense. Too. Yeah. So you got now. So they recorded, and at some point you transitioned to a podcast, right? Yeah, that was Guy Kawasaki's doing. It wasn't my doing because I'd still be at the radio station doing one show a week. But that was his deal. He, yeah. You know, Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he he, uh, he. I got him to come on my show, which was a miracle because you know. He makes one hundred and fifty thousand bucks talking to people. It's true when you look at it that way, for right. sure. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So you come come to come on my show. He goes. I think he came on with himself. He came on by himself, and he came on with Bob Pearson, and then. But he said, "Neil, you need to." He, he was generous, super generous to get get me all the stuff I needed. You know, this machine and blah, the one, even the one I have is bigger, and the microphones and stands and this and that and the other and all this. Sh- Neil, come to my house and just yes, sir. I'll be right there. So I show up and he's got all this stuff. He goes, I, w- I need you. I want you to promise me you're going to get out of the station and go podcast your show. So um, I'm like, dude, and I'm English. We don't like change. <laughs> you know, we're very stuck and we're stuck in the mud, not going anywhere. I'm like moving from England to here. Right. I'm the black sheep in my town. Yep. People are. I can go. You and I can go back to my home, my home, to Brighton. Go knock on. Uh, my next door neighbor's door. They're still their family's still living there. No, the people wow. don't people don't change that much in England. Here, it's no big deal. It's like, well, I spent three years here. I'm going to move over to Capitol. I'm going to spend two years there. I'm going to go over here and over here. You know, totally. there's a lot of change here. But a guy was like, "You're going to do much. You're going to you can say whatever you want. You can have a better time. You can drink legally. We used to drink illegally at KSEO. <laughs> and then you just have you know you're gonna you're gonna you enjoy it more." He was right. I hate to say that guy, but you're right. Oh, nice. Guy's golden touch right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So you transitioned to a podcast and you, it seems like a lot of what you're about is bringing people together, like community and music is, it, isn't that like a big part of your show and events and things the like music, that? The music came about because the station over there, the KSCO was originally built for music. Back in 1945, it was RCA radio station, and so they so they had live music in there, and they never and they stopped doing it. Now they just have this talk show stuff. So my show, we used to get bands to come in; they would love it because they get this incredible recording in this incredible studio. It sounded crystal clear, mm-hmm. and so bands would come down. They loved it. Me and TC didn't have to do anything; just sit there and have our own private concert. Yeah, right. We'd have a glass of wine. And, this band would be going off, right? Totally. So then, you know, and then it started, and then, uh, so we were doing, we were doing shows, and then when we, even with the podcast, we would, when I left there and went to do the podcast, we had the bands come to the Santa Cruz boardroom mm-hmm. and play there, yeah, which was freaking cool because the backdrop with all the skate yeah. skateboards and the band playing, it was freaking cool. People still, bands are still coming, so it all changed. It all changed when COVID hit. That's when everything changed. And when did you launch? A year before the pandemic? We went back to KSCO, then left again because we were promised something and it didn't come about. So we came. It was about a year. It was about a year after that we that we started doing music at the boardroom. Okay. Oh no, was it a year after? Or was it immediately? I forget. My memory sucks. But I mean, I love COVID. I mean, I the COVID got. 
I had a bl absolute blast. I know what you mean with respect to the devastation that it caused, like the the pause, right? Is what part of when? Because we need to is certain level like preface that also like what what did you love about the pandemic and the lockdown specifically? The the, the bringing music to people. Got it. That, yeah. I mean, I meant I meant it in that regard. It wasn't you know devastated a lot of people, but my regard was a brought I. I or we, or I don't say I, because my my co-host is always responsible too. Is we put music on, and uh, I remember you guys did it above the boardroom on the roof. Well, that was what, what, yeah, East Cliff too, I think, at like house party or something. We did a bunch of things there. My house and cap, my house and Aptos on the deck, and but the I was right after COVID hit. We're all at home, and we're like, we you know we were scrubbing the bags. We got we were afraid to go touch anything. Mm. You know, we're afraid to go right. anywhere, right? We just locked down. You can't go anywhere. So I'm um, here. I am trying to do yoga at home. That didn't work. Okay, YouTube videos. All right. So we spent half the day looking at YouTube videos. And I watched the I watched the Beatles sing "Get Back" on the roof of the of the Apple Studios in London. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was just a bad record. It was a really good recording. But then during that video, you saw all the people come out of their homes and looking up mm -hmm. at this huge tall building. And you still couldn't see the band, but you could hear the music. And all these people were out, out on the street looking up. No, it was the Beatles, but they could. They got close, but couldn't touch them. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. So, do a, so I called Terry. I go, Terry, you're not going to... Because I have wacky fucking ideas. Mm -hmm. Right. I go, T Terry, you're not going to believe what I just thought about doing. We're going to do this. He goes, let's put... This town's dead. We're on lockdown. There's nothing going on. People have flipped out freaked out we stopped doing our show we gotta do something man let's put a band on the roof of the boardroom no fanfare no instagram dick nothing right we may get it we're likely we'll get arrested but who cares fuck it right right just, just get let's just see what happens so i put this band this huge band called locomotive breath there's like 10 of them in the band they freaking rock and then all these heavy dudes are stuffing through windows, up ladders, <laughs> finally got them on this roof, and they just started, they just went off, and the place went, people came out of the homes, and people went nuts, mm -hmm. absolutely nuts. That's awesome. And just so we all know, you didn't get arrested, no. right? No, uh-uh. Cops come by, and they go, they did. Cops would drive by. And go, hey, good job, man. People. Thumbs up for and then, but they, And then I get, then I'd see, like we did it on Facebook Live, you see all the people that were writing, that were writing replies on Facebook from all over the world. Mm, going, Dude, yeah. thank you so much. We got nothing up in Spain where they had not complete lockdown. Nothing. You know, people were writing from all over the place and go, thank you so much. And when's the next show? Blah, blah, blah. And, and it was like, we're going to keep doing this. What's the biggest le lesson the lockdowns taught you? I think just keep, you know, I think the lesson taught me just to keep going. Don't stop. I mean, you, you, uh, whereas if you, if you, I believe the fact that you have, if you have a hurdle in front of you, you either, you can get over it or you can go around it. You can get, and you're going to get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. If that hurdle's there and you just go, oh, there's a hurdle. I'm going to stop. Okay. I'm going to sit here and do nothing about it or go around it, jump over it. And there's a finish line. I'm going to make that. What do you think about if the hurdles keep stacking up and you keep having, it's like banging your head against the wall right. or you're swimming upstream for an extended period of time of things that are outside of your control. What then? That, that is, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't put myself in that position. I think that's what Santa Cruz politics is like. I'm not going to go to politics. You want to go there? No, I sure. mean, not really, because I, I just think I've talked to people and I've interviewed so many people. That they just, you know, it's like they're gung ho. They get voted in, and once they get once they get voted in, it's like jumping into a pool of cement. They can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I go down that rope. But man, man, who wants to be that? That though, that's a job where you got to hurdles that seem to keep stacking up in front of you. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to go down that road. I don't. I don't want to get involved in that. For sure. My show, uh, what I do, doesn't have that many hurdles. 
I, I need to see if my co-host is going to show up tonight, like right here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because so we're yet yeah, now we're good, right? Yeah. That's no, my hurdle. Good. Yeah. That's my hurdle for the day. Is my co-host coming? Yeah. Okay. It, it's so funny. We have a, a lot in common there because <laughs> uh, when I started my show with my homie Sergio, it was the co-host thing and we were always chatting and getting things going. It was the same type of thing where I mentioned it earlier, but why is no one doing what we're doing right here? And it, it's so successful. And I, I would encourage anyone listening that got that that thing that they've thought about doing and maybe that wacky idea as you put it and really think about it like why aren't you taking action on it because a lot of times we just tend to make excuses and put it off you know absolutely so you I mentioned mean, i shake my head every day doing this show people love it people compliment the show um tc and i we have i we've laughed i've, I've been in the crowd i've been on the, on the ground crying in laughter you know yeah that's and, awesome. And when we've had guests that have cried in sadness, it's been, you know, emotions come out and it's been, you know, I wish I could go listen to every show. I don't, I don't listen to any of the shows. I never go back and listen to them. But I, some of the stories that you have, some of the stories are freaking amazing. Yeah, you might in time, you know, that's one of those things as long as we, that's, that's one of the beautiful things about like broadcasting in this modern age in general. One disclaimer though for podcasting you have to keep paying monthly even if you end your show otherwise they take it down but youtube if you put everything on youtube it lives forever so it's amazing put my show on youtube and then on iHeartRadio and spotify and itunes i'm not paying for them i don't know what the deal is but who made tc's covering that your co-host What's that? No, uh do anything yeah you guys should be paying for the hosting with if you're linked to Spotify and Apple it's and all that, comes, I don't, you know, I don't know if you care. Yeah, we're we're not here to talk about the. I rather, I rather, I, rather I, think, I think watching it on YouTube is is a better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, the trick for me has been with the YouTube. I think it's like ten bucks a month or something, and it skips the ads. And yeah. Also, you can listen to the YouTube with a locked screen because if you don't pay for it and you lock the screen. Yeah. Then you can't keep listening. So I've I've done that, and it's just like listening to a podcast because a lot of times you don't need to watch it. You yeah, know? yeah, it, yeah. It's yeah. so annoying to have your screen open. I like it locked. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So just a little yeah hack there. So you mentioned yoga at least once on this <laughs> podcast, but I've heard you talk about yoga a lot just in our conversations leading up to this. How how did you get into yoga, and what role does yoga play in your life? So I. It was a yoga studio opened up on 41st Avenue. I go, I'm going to go in there. I've never done a lot of yoga in the past. I was never good at it. And so this new studio opened up. I'm, I'm going to go see if they want to advertise them on my show. Right? And then I went in there. And, you know, why don't you just, she's starting out. And why don't you try a couple of classes, try to get a couple of classes. Hated it. Right? Yeah. My body, no, no, no. I didn't hate it. My body loved it. My mind's going, you got to get fuck out of here i had one of those classes this morning where i was in a yoga class and now i'm a yoga instructor and so and like we all do yeah. you know so she she ended up doing a trade which god bless her and i ended up doing a trade to go and i still do it to this day and but it keeps you i'm not that limber but i'm think I, w- I wonder where i would be if i hadn't if i'm i would i wonder where i'd be if i wasn't doing yoga mm-hmm. you know i can i can do most, I mean, I'm not. My poses are far, far from being perfect, but I try. I go in there and I do it, and I force myself to go do it. Yeah. What 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 is it about it? Is it the mindfulness? Is it the stretch? Is it the breathing? The connection to self? What is it for you that keeps? Let me tell you what it is. Yeah. Tell you what it is. Because I, I actually wrote, I actually wrote an essay about the. I'll, maybe I'll send it to you. Yeah, about that, about Doing yoga there. I wrote this long essay yeah. about it. So I think. I think. I think they hook you. Mm-hmm. I think you go in there and you're, you're stiff from surfing or whatever, or you're stiff from the last class you did. I'm 65 years old. Yeah. Right? So you're not exactly limber anymore. So you go in there, go in there, you're stiff from surfing or you're, you're stiff from the class you did yesterday because that weights and feel great when you leave. <laughs> great. But then you go home and you're stiff again. So you're gonna go back. So it's just so a, that's your theory. <laughs> All right. So to answer the question, it's for the stretch. Then it's, it's, it's for the physical. stretch. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. 
What? Do, uh, but, but mine's going. But my, but my mind in there yeah. is going because it's hot, mm -hmm. and some of the a lot of classes I do have weights, and I'm like, dude, you got it. I, I make myself stay. I make myself not leave the room. But it's like it's it's grind with my mind. It's a mind fuck. And it's a grind with my mind to stay in that room oh, totally. and keep doing. That's when the yoga starts when you want to quit. You know, that's literally what they say. I mean, they said to me, breathe. I'm breathing. What do you mean by breathe? I am breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I what made it so hard for me this morning is I've had a little bit of sinus pressure for the past week. Not sick or anything like that. But when yoga is all about breath, right? So, <laughs> right. It, like, <laughs> you know, you're a little bit upside down. I'm like, I... I I just couldn't surrender to it because really for me when yoga clicked it was having an instructor that cued the breath so much and really connecting the breath with the movement and then noticing the physiological change in my body as well as the mental change that's when I was like oh man I don't really enjoy doing this but I feel so good when I'm doing it and even better when I leave it's uh, it's survival mode for me yeah 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 it is I get you that. made it. I made. I got walk out of there. And I made it. I feel great. To sweat, especially if you have a hangover. It's the best place to go if you sure. have a hangover. I, I, yeah. <laughs> hot sweat, hot yoga. That stuff. But it's. I know. I. I know. It's good for me. I know. I'm doing. I know. My other friends my age can't do what I'm doing. Cannot do. It. Yeah. Mobility wise, well, yeah, mobility. I mean, yeah, you're 65 and you're going yoga and you're surfing uh, like every couple days, every, every day, day I surf. every day. Yeah. That's incredible. I don't know about that, it, it, it's pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, depending on swell and other conditions as well. But the fact that your body lets you do that and you're staying up with the practice, you know, I'm, I'm interviewing, I'm interviewing in the next couple of days a seven year old woman that swam from Santa Cruz Pier to Patola Pier. Santa Cruz Pier to Capitola Pier. And then she's also, last year, she paddled, she prone paddled, she's 78, across the Monterey, across the Monterey, all by herself. That's right, she's 78. That, that's, 78. That's nuts alone when you put it in that perspective for Santa Cruz to the boardwalk, or what'd you say, the boardwalk to Capitola? Yeah. yeah. So for people listening across town, but across Bay, Sweet. just for everyone listening, we got killer whales out here. Right, here you go. Yeah, you got big, got big sharks, killer whales, and she's out there on her own. God bless her. And um, what what is it? My dad would be a little disappointed that I wouldn't remember this because I've heard him say it so many times. But there's the valley underneath. It's, it's the it's the it's the trench that's down. Go, it's the trench that's in the Monterey Bay. That's that's as deep as the Grand Canyon. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where the sharks are. They come up. They come up. They come up to the warm waters. You have a Salinas River all the way up here to, to Rio de Mar. That's where they come get, get warm. And they, they... So you're probably pretty well educated about the Great Whites, and that's where you live and where you surf, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that because there's been more Great Whites here in recent years, and I don't know that much about it, but is there anything you can share about what you know there? You know, a friend of mine has a helicopter, helicopter business in, at Watsonville. So I've been up with him a couple of times. And we've flown over. He'll call me up. Hey, Neil, come check out the sharks. And you look down, right, Manresa and Rio Mar by the cement boat right there. And you look down out of the helicopter and you're like, well, holy shit. It's like Times Square. It's like full of, it's just like they're everywhere. Yeah. I've had, I've had a couple experiences with sharks. Yeah. They just said hello. They haven't done anything else. Thank God. So, come on. You got to tell us more than that. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I... A friend of mine, we were. I was at Manresa, and a friend of mine, I'm not going out there, Rolf, because he surfs every day. Come on, Neil, let's just go get wet. Blah 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 blah. I go, no, it's shitty. No, 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 no. Come on, just get wet. So, all right, go out there on a low tide, which is terrible for Manresa. And we go out there. We're here from my car. Stand, I'm standing on my board doing nothing, and he's sitting on his board. He's he's, he's a surfer. He's just sitting on his board with his feet on the water. Oh, you were on your paddleboard. I'm on my paddleboard. I looked. I looked down to the just right here next to my board, next to my board, and there was a ten foot, maybe longer, great white. Wow. Fuck. And he's just sitting. I'm like, fuck. Oh. Go, Rolf. There's a fucking great white right here. No, Rolf did, did would put his feet on the board. Me, I fucking paddled my ass out. And there was the junior lifeguard gives going on. You know, there was tourists there. 
got out and I go, dude, I just spotted a 10 foot, 12 foot great white, 20 feet offshore. And then they're running around, running around, running around, get the kids out of the water. I, I went, I go, you know what? I'm going to go back out. I got back out. I went back out. I lasted 30 seconds. I turned around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, Okay, I want to unpack all of this. So when you first saw the Great White, what did your body feel like? What did your mind feel like? What did your heart feel like? Like I thought it was beautiful. The... Beautiful. It was a... I looked down and I go, well, that's a Great White Shark. I don't do anything like freak out because I wanted to disturb it because I was just kind of sitting there. I wonder why it was just kind of drifting. But that's peace fucking beautiful. And I just kind of slowly paddled and just went, turned around, went, Ass in. Rolf just sat. God bless him. So uh, your first instinct was just basking in the majesty and beauty of this yeah. creature. And then kind of the brain came on of like yeah. the conditioning of society. Oh, fear, alarm. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And then that's when the hearts probably started to be in that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. You were like, okay, survival mode. I don't know why I went back out. I think I went back out because I survived. And they're going, it was my, my the adrenaline was flowing for me. I'm like, oh, that was a fucking amazing experience. And I went back out, but as I said, I lost it. No, no, no. What are you doing? You know, no. Get, get it. Get back to your, get back to your car and get the hell out of here. And when was the next time you went back in the water, specifically next in that day. area? Next couple of days. Yeah. It, so what was going on in your mind between those few days that you hadn't been out there? I saw this beautiful creature. You weren't worried at all. He wasn't gonna. He wasn't attacking me. Right. Exactly. You know, it was just like he just like was sitting. wasn't like he's like, I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a weird experience. Another time in Manresa, where I, there was this day at Manresa where I've never seen. We, we say never. It was probably two or three years ago. Three years ago, never seen so much sea life in all my life. It's dolphins and birds and whales. This one whale was probably a quarter mile out to sea, hanging his tail, hanging his tail on the ocean. Bang, bang. It sounded like someone was beating a drum. Weird, yeah. right? The dolphins going by, whales going by. It looked like it was busy. So here comes this whale, and, it, and a gray whale, and he cruises by. And I, I'm on my paddleboard. It's short. I used to have to ride short paddleboard. It's not anymore. I was on this seven six, and I, I go, I see him cruising. I go out just to kind of get a closer look, right? And then he makes this, he's like a truck, right? He makes this big-ass U-turn and comes back, and he's coming towards me. I'm like, oh, this is freaking super cool right here. I'm on this, but what am I going to do? Yeah. So as he's, he's just, you see him this, and the tail comes up, just this arching back, and come, come like this, come, he's going slowly. So I'm okay, Neil, just stand here. And he must have seen me because he kind of went to the right, and then he bumped my board. Wow! I fell off, right? But I made sure I had my my board over my head in case his tail came down. It, you know, and, you know, would, his tail would have hit me. I'd have been dead. Jeez. But he I mean, he didn't do that. But that was thing. I just see that thing he came right towards me. Just did. Just feared like this. Just feared the last minute, knocked me over. It was pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. That was a gray whale, you that said? That was a gray whale, yeah. And where was that? I hit Manresa. And you weren't that far out? I was at that time. When I, we were, I was in the surf break, and then I paddled out. Right. So probably 50, 50, 50 yards, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 30 wow. yards, you know? Have you ever had an encounter like that again? We should go check out that. You should take a helicopter ride, check it out. Yeah, I should get Full. them on the podcast so I can you get should. it right, He's, right? He can talk. Yeah. Uh, I'd I'll love you, an I'll intro. Give his name. Yeah, yeah, give yeah. me his intro. He, and he's great. Yeah, definitely. He's great, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, just to kind of wrap up that thread. For anyone listening, because there's, I, I'm here in Pleasure Point in a different area of Santa Cruz where there, quote, unquote, aren't sharks here, right? You know what I mean? And I would be more skeptical to go over to that area where they are personally. So, I've talked to a lot of people that surf there, but I'd be curious to hear from you for just the common person that's listening and being like, well, if you could surf in this other area where there aren't sharks, why would you intentionally put yourself in that position? 
what's your perspective on surfing in surf breaks that are known to have great whites? Tomorrow I'm going to drive over the hill, get my car, because, was, you know, I, what, I don't know, you can line up at all kinds of different things that jumped out of a plane, my parachute may have ever opened. I saw something on Instagram recently, I forget exactly what it said, but it was something along the lines of, like, how humans kill more sharks than sharks kill humans. I mean, the the truth is, the attacks are extremely low. Okay. Guy's name. He's a shark expert. Okay, cool. He's um, he's been on my shark. I don't think of his name right. It's, it's in my phone. But he lives in Prunedale, of all places. But he's been on dis- does a lot of discoveries channel. Oh, cool. That's the Shark Week. Yeah. And he is a he's a great. That would be awesome. You know. So the theory. So you know, we always we always have a million questions for him, and he's a great speaker. But the th- I always wanted to know the theory of the kelp. Right. Does the right. kelp? The pleasure point has the kelp. Yeah. Right. So we're protected. Yeah. He goes, no. He goes, Neil, you're not protected. If that shark wants to go for something, he's swimming through the kelp. It's not like he sees a fucking stop sign. Yeah. Right? He's going. So, uh, I think of, like, they say cows with fences. Like, it's a mental thing where the cow won't go past yeah, the no. fence. I get, I'm, I'm his name. You should give him a call. Absolutely. I'd love to. And yeah. a couple of years ago, you'd probably remember this. There was like a couple of high schoolers that were prone paddle boarding in yeah, Pleasure that, Point. The kid got bitten out here, but on the other side of the kelp. The, the, he didn't get bit. The no, board the board did. did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure he told the, the news that he punched the shark. Was that? Remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. But either way. Know. So just, I have told like my friends and one of people visiting and whatnot. Well, they say that there's no yeah. sharks here, but there was, a, if you want to call it, attack, a sighting. A... One way to clear, one way to get our surf break up, pleasure point back to where it was. I mean, not to be greedy, is to have a shark come through pleasure from Capitola through privates. Sh- you know, sharks the hook. Yeah. Thirty eight. The point. Do a couple of donuts, a couple of breaches, and uh, help a lot of people be gone. Or is Dr. Evil would say from Austin Powers, uh, getting sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their head. That would so be another you want way. So be- you want the best shark story? Yeah. You want another one? This is about, uh, the TC has a boat in the harbor. And uh, we were going out early for Jack O'Neill's paddle out. Oh, yeah. Right? Early. But it was so foggy, you couldn't see that wall. Right? Yeah. And a friend of mine, his name is Boots McGee. You should also. He is a well-known surf photographer. Another friend of mine had given four hundred bucks to give to a pilot of a plane, so Boots could go up and take pictures of Jack O'Neill paddle out. Boots kept calling me because he didn't want to spend the four hundred bucks if he couldn't see shit. Right? There's no point in flying around spending four hundred bucks. Yeah. You can't see anything. So he kept calling, kept calling. I go, I go, Boots, you can't even see the fucking. We just, I th- we think we're leaving the harbor. We can't even see the lighthouse. So it was like, so TC and I keep going. I said, what do you think? What do you think? I think, oh, I think we're doing good. Keep going. So, and, it, the, and then the, start, the clouds started dissipating. The boots, I think you're going to be okay. And it, which actually he was because he took amazing photographs of that. But we're going along, and it's got, TC has this cabin in his boat. It's a nice sized boat, a nice cabin. And we're standing there, what, you know, look, just going along, trying to catch where we were on the coast, and all of a sudden, boom, out fucking jumps this fucking great white, at least 12 to 15 foot great white shark. His, uh, his back was arched like that, teeth showing, and his black eyes are fucking pissed. Well, like, whoa, fudge, boom, just came out of the water, and I'm like, boom, fuck. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. She's just like holding over, hugging each other, going, holy shit, that thing was the boat yeah. then here comes the coast guard boat auxiliary boat and i kind of towards us i'm like dude did you fucking see the oh yeah we saw that are you gonna tell anybody <laughs> there's a fucking there's gonna be ten thousand people in the water and there's a pissed great white shark floating around here so no we're not gonna tell anybody i'm like oh my so got to where we're supposed to got to the to, to 38 more to put the anchor down go i ain't get fucking I am not going out to. He, he, he goes, let's have a people, a few people go by, and then we'll get in the water. That's a good idea. <laughs> so we saw that 
we thought it was Jack in disguise, right? We thought it was Jack came back as a shark. Yeah. And he was pissed off. He was like, his teeth were showing his gnarly. That was a crazy incident. That sounds wild. Yeah, that thing was scary. We, we were literally like holding on to each other going. And here you are still putting yourself in quote unquote <laughs> danger and sharking and vested. I surfed at Davenport. I surfed Davenport rec- up there recently. That's kind of sketchy up there. Then I went to Pescadero. That was the most kind of sketchy. That's okay. For sure. Well, Neil, this has been awesome. I know it's kind of a lot of different things that we discussed. Yeah. And I'm glad we got into some shark stories because that's always it's always, a good, it's always a good seller. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> always fun uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. But this is just the be- beginning, like you said, with your podcast too. You know, you can't do a full story or anything like that. So I'd love to jam with you again on the pod sometime. Sometime ever. And I'm excited for what Jamie and I got going on with you. And uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be in relation yeah. to the, when this one goes live. Yeah. But I definitely encourage uh, the listeners to t- check out your show, connect with you, especially if you're local. Got to be connected. And that's all going to be in the show notes. It's so, offthelipradio.com. Offthelipradio.com. That's right. Well, Neil, thank Thanks, you buddy. very much. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it.